Hey what's up guys welcome back you are watching Frutex so after using android 12 gsi i switched to dot os 5.2 android 11 based gsi and i can really say that i am using fully customizable smooth performing and the best battery backup prom ever on this device actually like phs triple gsi it has some major bugs but they are very negligible and we can use this rom as a daily driver the special feature of this rom is that it has fully working wallpaper based monad theming of android 12 and material you design so if you are interested in this project please watch the full video till the end for the installation and the review of this rom so you can decide at the end will you want to test or not this rom please keep the android backup in the twrp if you want to revert to the stock, just restore it inside the TWB. So without wasting time, let's get started. On the new adventure. So for the installation, first enable the developer option and in that enable the USB debugging. Now boot your device to the fast boot mode by using the advanced reboot tool or you can connect your phone to the PC and use ADB command ADB reboot bootloader. Now connect phone to the PC, first download the JSI exit file, extract it, we get the image file. Also download the VV meta file, place both the files in the same folder on the PC. Now inside that folder press shift plus right click of the mouse and select the open powershell window from the drop down menu. Now type and enter the command as shown on the screen. First one is the fastboot devices to check whether the device is connected or not. Now flash the VM meta by entering the command shown on the screen. You can also copy paste the command given under the video description. Now type the fastboot reboot fastboot phone will boot into the fastboot D mode as shown in the video. Now again type the fastboot device, now rename your JSI file to the simple one and type the command fastboot flash system and the file name of the image. It will take nearly 5 minutes and then on the TWRP screen click reboot and select the recovery. Now in the recovery click wipe and select the factory set and click reboot to the system. Our phone will boot to the .OS 4.2 with the gorgeous boot animation. It will take nearly 2 to 5 minutes. So here I had done all the setup, let's jump into the settings, about phone there we can see we are upgraded to the PHS table based .OS 4.2, new Android 11 Easter egg, security patch is of 1st October 2021 and the kernel is 4.14. So let's check what's working, so all the important things are working here like Wi-Fi and Wi-Fi hotspot for detecting and connecting the network properly. Bluetooth detecting the device connecting properly but still if you didn't get the sound in the media devices then just disable the A2DP offload in the PHS table setting. I will show you that in this video later. OLT networks and the calling also working properly but to enable that we need to trick some things in the PHS table setting. I will also show you that in the later video. So 60W fast charging is also working here. Surprisingly alert slide is working without showing notifications while using but you can see its notification in the status bar camera app is working perfectly but i suggest you to use the gcam port by the same everything works there except the night side which is causing the forced close of the app but within the camera there is a default night mode which detects the background and applies it while taking the pics portrait mode slow motion videos time lapse 4k 60 fps recording in the videos are working good zoom up to 20x is available HDR plus mode and the face beautification options are available and working. So let's check what are the major bugs. So the adaptive brightness is not working even if we enable it under the settings. Next major bug is the fingerprint sensor not working at all but you can use the face unlock instead which is less secure but the fastest way to access your smartphone. Another minor bug is some status bar icons not adjacent to the front camera punch hole. I tried to set the punch hole display cutout setting but it didn't work. Next is the phone vibrations are set to the high level intensity by default which causing the hard sounds when you use the haptic feedback so please disable all the haptic feedback in the sound setting as shown in the video but still the normal vibrations are present in the face unlock. Except these small bugs everything working. ROM looks nearly similar to the Android tail. We get the new volume panel, new quick setting panel which doesn't have the big rounded tiles but they have material you touch now. Everywhere in the ROM we can feel the material you touch which looks cool and even better than the Android 12. 
Performance of this ROM is buttery smooth. When you switch to the Force 90 Hz in the PHS setting, it will be cherry on the top of the performance of this ROM. So let's check the major customization which will blow your mind. First one is the theming option. ROM has the dedicated tab of the theming in the customization tab of the setting. So which has the wallpaper based theming for the overall system. We get the bunch of the wallpapers from the popular custom ROM community. So here I applied one wallpaper and the colors of the whole system got changed to the similar one of the wallpaper. Adapto icon is not available yet. We can make the changes to the wallpaper based color of the system also. There are also some tabs for the theme color and the brightness control. Below this we get the bunch of the watch faces for the lock screen which looks amazing. We also get the bunch of the font to increase the aesthetic of your device. I especially always prefer the Google Sans over all the other fonts. Icon shape customization is also available here. Inside the more setting we get the AOD and the lock screen status bar quick setting tile and the system customizations. I will not waste the time here explaining all this because we are all familiar with this in the custom ROMs. I specifically prefer the app lock feature in which we can lock any app with the pin password or the face lock as our fingerprint is not working. We can't use it here. New scrolling screenshot is available with the three finger gesture. We can directly share, delete or edit this screenshot without going into the gallery. As this ROM using the pixel launcher by default, we can also get the overview selection in the recent panel with the screenshot and the select tab. The next major feature in this ROM is the gaming control. ROM has the dedicated tab for the gaming control where we get the quick control option which has the screenshot, screen record and TND mode. We can enable or disable each features in the quick control. We can also block all the notifications to avoid the game interfere. Dynamic mode can automatically detect all the games in the gaming mode. We can also manually add them. So let's check the gaming mode, how it works and the game performance on this ROM. So after opening the game, gaming mode detects the game and automatically enables it. While playing the game, we get the quick control overlay which can be disabled by swiping back or accessory again by the swiping up. Gaming on this ROM working like butter on the bread. It's smooth and the lag free. Instead of this major feature, we get the dark mode with the scheduled option. We can use the face unlock instead of the finger fit scanner, which working very fast. So let's check the PHS table setting inside the stock setting application. Here we get the some dose control option. Under the miscellaneous setting, we get the force 90 hertz FPS option. We can enable or disable it. To solve the Bluetooth headset issue, check mark the force disable a 2 dp inside the miscellaneous settings. So in the AMS setting, we get the option to enable the OLT. Just check mark the last two tabs. Click install IMS APK. Phone will download the IMS APK and install it automatically. We can see that notification at the bottom. Now reboot the phone. After reboot, again go to the same setting. Now click the create IMS APN and reboot. Now you get the new 4G OLT calling inside the network setting. In the last customization tab, we get the ascent color, icon shape, icon pack and the font customizations tab. So the main question in everyone's mind is how is the battery life because GSI are known for their bad battery life. So Dotto team has done amazing job here. Under the battery management, we get the adaptive battery setting, battery saver profiles like the default, moderate, high and the extreme. Setting didn't showing up full app uses, it's a bug, but I use this device one day and 19 hours, nearly two days with the six hours of screen on time. So I use the AccuBattery app on the next day from the Play Store to check the app uses. So it's still not the complete app uses, but you will get the idea. So you can check I played two, three games of the BGMI, watches the last of video on the YouTube, done the browsing in the Chrome. So absolutely it's a tremendous battery supporting ROM. I will again check 4-5 cycles and report you back. So that's it for today guys. If you think I help you, please do like and share this video. Subscribe our channel. Press the bell icon for the new ROMs for the Nord 2. Till then take care. Bye bye. See you next time.